Everyone wants to live an inspired life, yet so many people search for happiness following the footsteps of peers and taking advice from people who have different values and outcomes to which they're searching. There are people born into wealth, graduated from the best universities in the world, and there are people who have none of that and yet are living extraordinary lives full of fulfillment and reward. The purpose of this podcast is to share insights and strategies that allow you to question the status quo and think freely, so you can design your life and be who you want to be. We get one life. Time is our most valuable asset. I believe that when we're free and able to focus on meaningful work, we become better human beings. This is Always Free, and I'm your host, Jason Greystone. Welcome to the leading podcast for financial empowerment and wealth creation. Subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. You can connect with Jason on social media and subscribe to the Jason Greystone YouTube channel for weekly videos. Don't forget to also subscribe to the weekly newsletter to receive frequent educational content and action steps to help you design your life so you can be who you want to be. For news on all future events and updates, go to jasongreystone.com. Well, 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 welcome back to the podcast, guys. Hopefully, you've all had a nice week so far. If you're listening to this for the first ever time, welcome. This is the number one podcast for financial empowerment and wealth creation, bar none. Okay, it's absolutely the number one podcast. So, uh, if you're listening to this one first, I highly recommend you go back to the beginning. If you go back to the beginning, you're going to see the whole journey, and I kind of built it in a in a specific order. So uh, I highly recommend you go back. A lot of people go back to the beginning and then tell me, oh God, I've just binged eight, nine, ten of your episodes whilst I was in the gym and then I went home and I listened in the car and, and they get kind of hooked on that journey. And that's because I've I built it in a, uh, it's almost like a, I guess, one hooks on to the next kind of thing. So highly recommend you do, you'll get the most value that way. But if not, enjoy this one, this week's been a bit of an interesting one for me. Trading's been quite slow with the trading guys in the live room. Uh, I've actually had uh, one trade on my swing trading account, which done all right. And then I've had one loser in the live room account and then one at break even because I got triggered and then closed it out. So uh, interesting, but very interesting on other things. I invested in a brand new startup. Okay, so it's a startup company, tech data company that I invested in this week. So that's exciting. And I'll I'll let you know more about that as that unfolds. But this week, I just really wanted to talk a a little bit about um, kind of the social side of building wealth. Because when you're, you you kind of put yourself out there and you're you're building a social following, a so you know you're becoming a, you're building your social leadership. There is a wealth element to that as well because people want to uh, do business with you. Opportunities come to you. You don't have to go and ask as much for business, and people kind of just are magnetized towards you, right? And they and they're drawn towards you. And there is a a massive aspect of that in wealth building because income, right? <clears throat> income, and. I was it, it, I was talking about this the other day, and we was talking about uh, an old conversation I had with someone, which I'll, I'll tell you about in a minute. But it was really around giving and receiving, okay? When and they kind of had this opinion that when you're on the social platform, you're just uh, you know you're just taking, 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 taking. And I said, well, that's not really true because. Although in, although opportunities do flow to you, it's that person that's put in the outpouring of value every single day and putting themselves out there and choosing to go and deliver that value every single day to build a following. And I, I want to talk a little bit about this because people have this warped opinion of you should be able to, you know, you should be able to give more than you get, but somehow end up with an abundance of, of wealth and financial prosperity. And it just doesn't, it doesn't work like that. It really doesn't work like that. You know, whatever you give out, you get. And I started, we were talking about this, and I started talking about um, Richard Branson, right? So we looked at Richard Branson's Twitter followers, and his Twitter followers have got something like 4.3 million followers. Now, he doesn't give anything, he doesn't charge anyone, 
right? Who charges stuff? Who charges the, the marketplace? Virgin. Now, if you look at Virgin's following on Instagram, they've got 205,000 followers at the time of this recording anyway. Okay, so then we looked at uh, Gary V. Gary V's got 7.6 million. He doesn't personally charge the marketplace and get income from the marketplace. His business does. And his business, VaynerMedia, happens to have 200,000 followers. So it's, it's vastly uh, different. And then um, I think Elon Musk, we were looking at Elon Musk on Twitter, he had 31 million followers. 31 million followers with just 4.8 on Tesla. So it's not just, you know, it, it doesn't work like that. It's not that people are putting out themselves out there to just get some money for themselves. It's, it's giving out value so that they get the fair exchange that equals out by the marketplace. And the more you give out, the more you get. It's literally impossible to give more than you receive because just by just by definition, just by saying that, for everyone who gives something, someone's receiving something. All right? <laughs> it's, it's as simple as that. For, for everyone who gives something, you someone else is receiving something. And it made me think about this charity event that I did a few years back now because every year... I raise money for charities in what in one way or two ways per year and I like to do an event at the end of the year near a Christmas time and I do it every single year and then I'll do a couple of charity donations and things like that uh, during the year and there was this one particular event where I was raising my profile it was at the time where I started talking online and I was going I was a bit weird because everyone was like oh god what's he doing oh my oh no he's he's talking on on the Instagram live and the Facebook live oh no uh, and then and then obviously you lose some of those people because they just can't bear it and then uh, most of the people though they end up asking you they they get back in contact with you in the end and try and figure out you know, oh what is it you're doing it's really inspiring what you're doing and and that's just because they end up seeing a piece of themselves in you that's that's inspiring and they realize that they're not you know that they want to do it but anyway, that's another rant entirely. But I was going out there and I was putting my name out there and I was raising my social profile and I was speaking and I was giving my opinions and my thoughts and my insights and my tips and my and I was just sharing value with the world and growing a following because it was a balanced growth, right? And this particular time, even though I'd raised chari- I'd run money for charity for years, you know, I think the previous year before that when I wasn't raising my profile, I'd cycled to uh, Amsterdam, and we raised about ten grand uh, for a for a, an old people's hospice, and no, nothing was said then. But it was just this particular time, right? So oh, I've been doing it for years, raising money for charity for years, and then this particular time, because I'm putting my name out there, I'm running for charity, and the guy says, "Oh, he only wants to um, he only wants to raise money for this kid's charity to raise his own profile," and. Just someone saying that initially was very, very alien to me because I, 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 I'm completely on a parallel universe to that way of thinking. I'm, I, I, I didn't get it at first. I was like, well, what do you mean? And, uh, and then I like, kind of let it digest and I thought, the people that say that kind of thing just do not get fair exchange. They've got this entire uh, warped opinion that you should be able to give more than you get and all of a sudden you should accumulate a large sum of wealth and you should be able to live the life that you want to live. Well, that's not how the world works. What I said to the guy was, yeah, I do want to raise my profile (laughs) because the more I raise my profile, the more I'm going to continue to do these charitable events and the more difference I can make. The more difference I make, the more I use that as leverage to raise my profile and then the more I raise my profile, the more money I can raise and the more difference I can make. And it is as simple as that, right? There was no, there's nothing selfish about it. There's nothing narcissistic about it. There's nothing uh, overly altruistic about it. It's just balanced. It's literally balanced. The more you give out, the more you get back. And the more you get back, the more you give out. It's as simple as that. And this kind of really, really holds people back because it's a massive conflict in their mind. The greater the fair exchange, the greater your wealth. 
Think about all of the billionaires in the world and you'll see that there's billions of people they've served. I think Jeff Bezos was in the news this week after plowing billions into renewable energies and things like that. So he's going to help more people than any of these people who are going, oh, Jeff Bezos is just greedy. He's just got, you know, and they've got this one-sided opinion of giving or receiving. So the people who don't normally have the ability to comfortably do both and they're being held back massively without even knowing, are the ones that are lacking one of two things. And it's either self-worth or what we call other worth, which is basically your worth to the world, your value to give to the world. And if you're lacking self-worth, you don't have the confidence to go out and, and um, you know put your values and opinions and insights out there. You don't have that self-worth. You don't value your time. You don't value your... Uh, opinions you don't value yourself and your other worth is when you feel like people won't value your opinion so you don't feel like you've got enough um, value to give to the world so not just self-worth where you, you don't feel worthy of talking about it but self, but other worth is where you don't feel like you've got value to talk about and you're normally lacking one of those two things, but these people become very, very frustrated because they're looking to have a life that they want, but they won't accept that there's balance, there's fair exchange. You have to go and give and get, get and give. Everyone in the world, just by the laws of physics, okay, are, are looking for fair exchange, balance. Even when you get married, right? And this is a, this is a big one. People find it difficult to accept that, Whenever you marry someone, usually you're marrying someone who is slightly opposite to you, okay? So that you're basically filling the void of areas of life that you, are, that you aren't motivated by or you, you don't necessarily want to, you're not driven by, okay? And there's something missing. It might be something that you're not naturally gifted at, not naturally inspired by, not naturally interested in. Uh, some people love family and relationships and social. Some people love business and wealth building and, and money and, and uh, you know, very academic. Some people are very creative. Some people, and, and normally when, when any successful relationship I've seen, people are opposite. When they're the same, it's normally a, a level of disempowerment there. When they're exactly the same and they just like one thing each and it's the same thing, there's a level of disempowerment because not, neither of them are challenging and supporting one another to help each other grow. You know, you see the couples that just sit on the sofa watching TV and they're kind of getting, putting on weight, getting overweight, getting, uh, they're smoking and they're just watching all of the series on TV and there's no balance so they're on this spiral downwards. But it's normally the couples that have got, you know, both sides, balance, that thrive. Because they know, they understand that each of them support and challenge one another in the areas that the other one isn't, um, you know, strong in. But even when you're getting with someone and you're trying to find a partner and, you know, anyone who's going to get married, basically the questions going through their head is what is in it for me? That's it. It's what is in it for me? And if you don't believe that, then it's de you're delusional because of course you're thinking that. Why wouldn't you be thinking that? What Are you just going to say, oh, no, don't worry about it. I'll write my life off. I'm just going to serve this person forever now. I don't want my own opinion. Own va you're, of course you're thinking what's in it for me. And if you don't believe that, then why do marriages break apart? Well, they break apart because he didn't show me attention. He didn't... Um, you know, give me the care that I that I wanted. He didn't provide me with this. She didn't do this for me. She didn't do that for me. She left me for someone else because of this or that. And the reason people leave each other is because one of their values is not being met. One of their needs is not being met. When they originally met, that's what the question was. And it's subconsciously because of the infatuations initially, but it's subconsciously there. It's like you're scanning this person. You're, you're asking yourself, what is in this for me? And the more you can believe that and the more you accept that, the more you can really start to understand the laws of balance and appreciate that you need fair exchange and there's both and it's okay to give and it's okay to receive and you'll live an abundant life. You will live a very, very prosperous life. Now, I know you guys listening to this understand. I know you understand, but I want you to relate to someone who, who you know who doesn't understand. And I just want to say, don't ever be set back 
by that person's opinions. In fact, share this podcast with them <laughs> because, you know, because these beliefs can really, really hold people back for a long, long time when they just believe that they should be only giving and they shouldn't be taking anything and they shouldn't be asking what's in it for me and they shouldn't be dared to raise their profile when they're raising money for a charity and they shouldn't be ever seen to be being selfish, ever. When all we want in life is to have a, 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 an abundant life for us. That's all we want. We want to be inspired to do what we want to do every day. We don't want to do what someone else wants us to do every day. We want to do what we want to do every day. And it's okay. It's okay to say that. But having these opinions and people saying things like this can have a massive effect, especially when you're talking around your children, especially when you're talking around uh, young people who are just taking in and absorbing all these beliefs. Because there was a the other week, this is a little bit off topic, but kind of the same thing, how these kind of throwaway sayings or not thinking before you speak can really have a lasting effect on people so my son for instance he's he's quite he's at the age where you know they're all kind of trying to find acceptance and they're trying to they, they, they want to be their own person but they've still got to kind of fit in and my son's always been a little bit different in the way that he and, and it's great because he doesn't care that he's different but he's still, you know, there's still that challenge of fitting in with everyone else. And he'll wear slightly different clothes to everyone else. And it was coming up to one of those days at school where you could wear your own clothes. And he was a bit hesitant about going in. It was on the Friday and he said, I don't really want to go in because I wear, you know, I don't want my friends to laugh or take the mick out of my clothes. I just can't be bothered with it. So he was already had a little bit of a complex about being himself, being authentic, going into the school and being accepted. And, and anyway hats off, he went in, he didn't care, I said, look, don't care about what other people say, just go in, he went in, and the first thing the teacher did was come up to him and say, you can't wear those jeans, and he said, why can't I wear the jeans, so already he had a little bit in his in the back of his head to, of, of not being accepted, first thing the teacher did, okay, a grown man, come up to him and said, you can't wear those jeans, they're too revealing, right? Now we're talking about jeans that have the slit on the knee, okay? So you know like the cool kind of trendy jeans that have a slit on the knee and they show a knee and they're quite cool and they're skinny jeans with a with a slit and the tassel bit on the knee. That's it, right? Too revealing. So immediately smack down the boy when he's already on a back foot and he came back and told me this and I said, what do you wear in PE, in physical education? And he said, well, yeah, they wear shorts. And I said, do the girls wear shorts? And he's like, yeah, the girls wear shorts. The boys wear shorts. Yeah, the boys wear shorts. The boys wear shorts. The boys wear shorts. Yeah, ridiculous. Like that teacher has literally not taken the time to even think and have his own opinion and own mindset. He's just going by this rule that's been indoctrinated into to him by the school. And it's a rule. And no one's questioning the rule. They're just saying this is, uh, it's too revealing. You can't wear it. They don't take into consideration the feelings of, of the and the vulnerabilities of adolescence, okay, and the hormones and the, the change in hormones at that level. They don't care. They just say these things, and that can have a massive, long-lasting impact on people. Kind of off topic from what I was talking about before, but it still goes back to these beliefs that we have really, really hold us back, really, really hold us back, because let's say for instance that my son wanted to go out and talk about his style of clothing he might not now and that's going to be holding and that will be something that will hold him back if it's not addressed if it's not gone if it's not balanced and neutralized so the sooner you can accept that the better if you just think outside the box and you think a little bit differently you can have literally a completely different life but most importantly you can be do and have whatever you set your mind to so that's really it. Um, I, I hope this, I think it's a little bit of a shorter session, but that's it for this week, guys. Hopefully you got value from that. As I say, share it with someone who you think will get value. If you've resonated with it, you know, just hopefully you take it on board and you, if you've been holding yourself back a little bit, don't. Just accept it's, it's all about balance. The whole universe is about balance. And uh, that's it. So enjoy the rest of your week. And until next week, have a great rest of your day and weekend, and I'll see you then.
Subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. For news on all future events and updates, go to jasongraystone.com.